This is the final lecture of you to know. That's right, it's only a six, five, it's only five lectures, you know? Because here's the deal, there's really not that much you to know. Like it's, like once you know it, you just know it. And then you go on about your day. That's nice and easy. So, anyways, in the first episode at Chapman, we talked about the dead, decrepit, decaying state of the university system. We talked about how it needs to be revivified by the individual, and that's that's how we fix our old systems. Remember we talked about power leveling, and we talked about visualizing yourself as a video game character, and you wanna boost your stats, and you wanna level up, you know? Because as you level up, remember, you get stronger, you get better gear, you get more gold, you get to go on cooler quests. Like, leveling up is really fun, and you wanna level yourself up, in a sense, in the real world, and that's that's where you go to school. That's what school should be about. School should be about power leveling yourself, especially in university. My hypothesis is that the ways that a person needs to level up to be successful in today's world is different than the ways universities typically level young people up. So we're kind of in this weird time where these prestigious universities and institutions who are doing things one way for a long time and getting really good results, suddenly the whole digital age comes in and it levels the playing field and now you know, getting this college degree isn't, it doesn't carry the same weight that it did 30 years ago. And it's causing a lot of disruption in our culture, in our country, in our world. Like, I mean, we're kind of a global unit now with the internet. Like, I mean, this video is proof of that. Like, in a sense, when I'm talking to this camera, I'm talking to every single human on the planet Earth, which is crazy to conceptualize because you literally can't talk to every single human on the earth through the internet. And like, like the trickle down implications of technology, like the ones we've been experiencing in this digital revolution, just shift the playing field completely. And so again, we talked, this was in the quote in the first video, in the Chapman video, about how when things change a lot, that the state decays faster. The universities are in a horrible place right now. And the reason they're in this bad state is because there's been a lot of change surrounding them. And like, that's not, I mean, it's not a great thing. It's not a horrible thing. It just means, it just means things are different now. And the cool thing about people is that when we align ourselves properly towards a common good, we're able to adapt, adapt our ideas, adapt our mindsets. That's something that modern people are really, really inept at is being very, very fluid, very flexible with their ideas, their beliefs, which is good, which is, which is the way you should be, especially when you realize how little you really know. And I mean, that, that realization can be shocking sometimes. You know, everyone everyone can think about, think back to their those moments, especially ages like 16 to like 20, where you just have times over and over where you're like, wow, I was really stupid, or that was really dumb. And, you know, you're currently adjusting and changing and shifting your ideas, your perceptions, your views on things as you try to adapt to become, like, as you try to become all that you could be in the world, as you try to find your place in society, find your place in it all. It's a very, it's a very transformative process, and kids especially are much better at using these new technologies than adults are. And that's why you're seeing such a dramatic shift in the way kids are now, the way kids used to be 20, 30 years ago. But that's another topic. We're focused on the decrepit state of the university system, and we're going to map this on the politics. And then after we map it on the politics, we're going to show how, when you hear someone's political opinions, you can now understand their psychological temperament and you kind of understand them. It gives you a lot of power. So we're going to end with power. So we started with power leveling, and then we're going to end power. You get to know. 101. Intro class. Six lectures. Really short, quick and easy. Anyway. Okay. So you said we were going to talk about... Yeah, we're going to go from the decrepit state. So we're going to start off, we're going to talk about the dis decrepit state. And that's going to lead us into politics for dummies, which is going to take us into big fat temperaments. Bad boom, 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 quick, easy, three-part lecture. We're good, we're out of here, we're done. All right, let's get into it. Decrepit state. All right, remember, you've got order, and you've got chaos, and you've got you, and you're hopping in between order and chaos. This is, these are the very, the most basic. Come on, camera, focus on me. Focus, please. And in the order side, we learned about hierarchies, and we learned about how when society comes together, to solve its problems, two things appear. There's cooperation and there's competition. And these two forces, cooperation and competition, are the driving forces that give us this hierarchical shape. Now, the problems with the hierarchy is that most 
people stack up at zero, which isn't good, and they can become corrupt by tyranny. So here we go. So this is what politics are about. So honestly, if you're watching this, you probably have no fucking clue what politics are, or like what they're about, and that's okay. Like honestly, I didn't know what politics were until I was like 20. Most people don't understand where politics come from, or like, anyway, it's kind of cool. Just let me explain it to you, and you can like be like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's do this real quick. Quick and easy. Quick and easy, easy. Okay, so cooperation is competition. So we have the left and we have the right. So this right here, this is the political spectrum, okay? So the farthest end of the left, you could think of like as the alt-left. I don't really know what alt means, but that's what, that's what they call it. And the alt-left, the things over here at the way extreme end, this is, this is identity politics. This is Marxism. Marxism? I don't know how to spell Marxism. That's not how you spell Marxism. It doesn't matter. Anyway, all that. Identity politics. Marxism. The feminists who go too far are usually all left or left leaning. Um, so, like, the left over here, these people, these people are normal. And what they're about is they say, oh, okay. So, we've got all these people stacked up at zero. We need to help the dispossessed. We need to help the people in need. And those people are the Democrats. And the basic idea of being liberal is that we all help each other out. And through that cooperative process, remember there's cooperation and competition. Through being cooperative, that's that's the key to good government policy. And then we have like the moderate. Or this is also the ignorant. So most people most people don't know dictionary about politics. So they'll just say moderate and they'll just say I'm in the middle because they never like thought about this before. So it doesn't matter whether you think about this, these things or not, they matter and that should scare you because you probably haven't thought about them before, but they matter. So that means every point up until now, you've been missing something big in the world that matters and you didn't know about it. And that's scary. So like, maybe you should listen to this. Okay. So you need to understand the basics of politics. Just the basics, just the basics. Okay, this is the alt-right and this is Nazis. This is white supremacy. This is like, nationalism gone too far. This is also called totalitarianism. And this guy over here is also like not really a good way to go about things. Nazis, that didn't go well. White supremacists, those guys are whack. I mean, you just, you don't want to be over there. But kind of way far away from these crazy people, there's the right. And the right, they really believe in freedom. They believe in this competition aspect. They think it should be more every person for themselves. If, you, if you're willing to put in the work, you deserve the results. At the end of the day, the buck stops with you. It's, it's about responsibility. It's about you are in control of your own future. And that's, that's the essence of what a Republican is about. Now, there's this kind of in the middle chunk, like not all right, but kind of around here. And we're gonna go, these are called conservatives. And what a conservative's viewpoint is, is that we should be very careful about throwing away old ideas and old structures, about old order. A conservative would say, Juno, I don't think you should be running around different college campuses. I think you should trust in the system. That's a, that's a conservative viewpoint. It's, it's a belief in tradition. It's a temperamental liking of things staying the way they are. Someone who's conservative, likes more order in their life than chaos. So over here, the opposite of conservatives are liberals. And liberals are all about novel chaos. They like, they like to take the world as it comes. They like to live in the moment. Um, they're very open to new ideas, new possibilities. They're very flexible and malleable. Liberal ideas have become more and more popular in our current political landscape because it's been a better strategy over the last 20, 30 years because of how quickly things have been improving and evolving technologically and sociologically. So there's a big, I would say, maybe this is just an opinion I'm throwing in here, but I would say that people my age tend to be more liberal than conservative. And there's also this idea that as you get older, you become more conservative and less liberal and you want more order in your life and less novel chaos. We can think of like chaos over on this end and order over on this end of the spectrum too. So like, here's the whole political spectrum. 
and where it comes from. Well, it's based in your temperament, which we're going to get onto next, which is your psychological stats, I suppose you could say. This is your biological stats. These are your base stats. Um, remember, we're looking at ourselves like an avatar. So your own intrinsic base stats alter the way you perceive the world, which alter how you think the problem of hierarchies should be solved, which alters the way you think about how you should... Because remember we talked about how it's you in the middle, and then there's order, and then there's chaos, and you need to pick how much order and chaos you have in your life. Some people like, ah, oh, they like more chaos, 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 and some people thrive in like order, and like conscientious people really like order. Open people really like chaos. These are the, the big five traits. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We just wanna wrap up real quick. So we're gonna wrap up political science real quick. Why, why do we need political science? We need political science because in big societies, when we have problems, we want solutions to our problems. And if we want solutions to our problems at a big scale, we have to work together which means we have cooperation and competition. This means that our societies will be arranged hierarchically and that's just the way it is. So we need to deal with that and that's what the political science is about. It's about dealing with hierarchies on a, on a cultural, on a social, on a big scale, okay? A societal scale. So it's a broad spectrum of perspective on how to go about things. And what politicians are supposed to do is they're supposed to attend to these hierarchies because Yes, they're always being corrupted by tyranny, so we need to moderate them. And yes, we need to help the people that, who are dispossessed and stagnant. But so, like, it's checks and balances. Like, we need discussion between the left and the right. We need to talk to each other to figure out what's the best way to, to solve our problems. Just a little side note of, like, the bad thing that's happening right now in our current political schema is that we're getting really polarized, which means people are, like, they're spreading out on the spectrum. And when people get polarized, they just start becoming like enemies because they're really, they're really different from each other. And when people's ideas become like really different, they start fighting and it's like yelling and bad and riots and burning. Like, like that's, that's kind of the idea. Like the college kids who are like burning their campus down and like, like rioting or like not allowing people to speak on their campus. Like that's, that's just a cause of the spectrum being like way, way spread. Like normally, like a real Democrat versus a real Republican, they're all kind of like, like a good politician, they're, they have the right, they have the right end goal in mind, right? A good politician is properly aligned, but everybody goes about doing the most good in a little different way, a little different temper. And that's why we have politics. It's the discussion between the different kinds of people about what's the best way to organize our society. That's what politics is. So. The thing is, is that when you talk to someone, when you talk to someone, you can get an understanding of their political beliefs. And if you know what someone thinks politically, you can then map that onto their temperament. And you actually know a lot about that. So the big five, it's also known as ocean, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. These are the scales, like your own little, your own little inner levels of these traits are, are what make up you uh, in terms of your personality. These are like the base categories of personality. Okay, so say, say you have Billy right here, okay? And Billy is a real person. So Billy is highly open, he's not very conscientious, he's kind of extroverted, he's pretty agreeable, and he has a high tendency to feel negative emotion. This can also, this is like, this leads to compassion, high levels of compassion. So by looking at Billy's ocean levels, we could predict his political needs. So since he's highly open, Billy, Billy likes new ideas. Billy's probably pretty creative. He's also, he's not super conscientious, he's not super orderly, which means he's kind of like go with the flow. And we can look at his extroversion to, or introversion to extroversion. If he lands here, he's more extroverted, so he's happy around people. We look at his agreeableness, he's very agreeable, which means very nice, very nice and polite, well-mannered, and he's also high on eroticism, which is the ability to feel negative emotion, which is empathy. So he's very in tune with his emotions, so to speak, very empathetic. So based on what I know about Billy, because I have his ocean levels, I could tell you on a political scale from the right to the left. So I could tell you that Billy would be, he'd be a liberal, he'd be left leaning because of his traits. So the cool thing is, is that these traits map on to political beliefs. And it's a really interesting concept to really conceptualize because it means that we can go from one domain of science 
to another. We can, we can hop disciplines, if you will. And so when I say the word map, it's also worth thinking about what a map actually is, right? So, so think about a map of the world. It's a, it's a low resolution, abstract representation of what the world actually is. And so what this, what your big five model is, is it's a low resolution mapping onto your temperament, which gives a low resolution map towards your political leanings and tendencies. And that's, that's real. Like that's really kind of crazy if, when you really understand that, because what that means, it means that you're not just this spontaneous, you know, eruption of feeling and pleasure. It's not just do whatever feels right, you know, like you have, you have these nested biological circuits, like your programming is not just all new functions, right? You have some base shit coded into you. And so when you understand your inner coding a little more, remember we're talking about, we're talking about looking at yourself as a video game. These are, these are Billy's, these are Billy's stats, right? These are his variables. When you think about yourself as this Billy, and when you understand your own stats, like you understand yourself and you understand the world, and it's like, oh, okay. Because then, oh, because once you get this, now you understand things. You understand why things work the way they do. You understand why people behave the way they behave. And that's, that's when it becomes, well, there's another stage. Just realizing this is one part, but you also have to be able to step away from yourself and, eh, we'll get into that later. Um, we're gonna wrap up this idea, this Billy metaphor, okay? This is the this is the real important sh of useful sh you know, of this first epoch. Epoch? I don't know. Oh, I wish I knew a good word. My first volume? No, I don't know. My first it was six parts. What do I call six? I don't know. My first. I don't. I don't know. Anyway, the important thing of the first episodes of the college tour is this class, Useful Shit to Know 101. And the important things that you need to take away from this class is the Billy metaphor. Because once you understand the Billy metaphor, you kind of get the idea of what's going on on this channel. And I think if you understand this metaphor, you will be a much more powerful person in the real world. So the Billy metaphor is pretty much this. You have your little Billy, and he's in the video game, and he has all these stats and all these ratings. And so everyone has their Billy, right? And each Billy has their ocean statistics. This is their temperament. This is the big five. This is your personality right here. And then you also have your fitness levels, which remember are four categories. You have physical, intellectual, social, and spiritual. And you know, you have, your Billy has its own, its own stats, its own values. And the idea behind education is you're trying to understand one, you want to understand your own sliders. You want to understand yourself and your own temperament and what that means and how that relates to you and the world. And you want to boost your fitness levels. You want to boost these fitness levels as much as possible. And that, remember, is how you go from dumb AF to world plus high job. It's literally that simple. Understand your ability in a video game. Figure out how to hack the game, figure out how to level your billy up. It's a four part process and you can become your own hero of your own story, of your own journey. Think about, think about what you want your journey to be. Think about what you want your story to be. Like, like you can put some time and thought into this when you're young, right? You can literally create your billy. Your billy can be whatever the fuck you want it to be. Like your billy can be an astronaut or your billy can be an astrophysicist or your billy can be a dancer or your billy can be a nurse or a doctor or a surgeon like like you can make this billy literally anything you want if you power level properly um if you don't play the game very well you're not going to level up and you're going to be confused and remember remember we talked about religion for a couple episodes too if you don't if you don't figure that part out of your billy you don't understand the spiritual side if your spiritual fitness levels are boosted a little bit you're just going to be this conflicting ball of emotions and you'll these will just be all over the place. And that's not good. Like spiritual strength is really important. Social strength, you've got to be able to fit in with people. You've got to be able to interact. Remember, we have these big cooperative hierarchies. Cooperation is a huge part of that. Like, like the best parts about being human are about interacting with others. Like that's that's the great part about life. That's love. That's that's a big piece of it. Your intellectual fitness. Like, do you want good do you want a good operating system? Like, I mean, everyone's used a nice computer to like an old clunky piece of before like it's nice to have the nice hard drive the 
balling graphics card, your CPU through the roof. Like, it's good to have a well-oiled machine, and that's your physical fitness, you know? Your body is your machine, as many personal trainers will tell you as they try to get you to buy their ding, 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 I don't know. But it's, it's true, you know? Like, your physical fitness is important. You should, you should get on that. And it's just, it's something that'll help your Billy in the social world if his physical fitness is higher. Or if you're Billina, Billina? What would girl Billy be called? Bessie? Billy and Bessie? If you're Bessie and like, you're really smart and you're really social and you're really physically healthy, then guess what, Bessie? You're gonna be having a great time in your life because you're just a dope person. And that's the point. It's about being a good person and doing dope sh Thank you. This has been Useful Shit to Know 101. I am Dr. Not a Dr. Juno, teaching you the useful shit to know.